Hello, this is David Hartman from London Metropolitan University. We all have beliefs about various things, and every now and again we encounter new information that relates to those beliefs, either supporting those beliefs or sometimes contradicting those beliefs. And one question is, how much should we change our beliefs when we do encounter such information? Well, there is a method by which we can work out how much our beliefs should change. And uh, this method is based on Bayes' theorem. Uh, the Reverend Thomas Bayes was an 18th century uh, mathematician and clergyman. And Bayes' theorem uh, was something he developed, but which was published a couple of years after his death in 1861. And to illustrate how Bayes' theorem works, I'm going to take an example that was published in 1982 by David Eddy. David Eddy is a physician, and uh, he was interested in how physicians should respond to diagnostic information, bearing in mind that medical tests um, are not always perfect, and in fact usually aren't, aren't perfect. So, in this example, Eddy gave... Uh, the following information about a female patient to a hundred physicians and this was a female patient uh, who was said to be presenting with a slight lump in her breast and uh, the first bit of information is that based on cases with a similar age, history, symptoms and physical findings there is a 1% probability that she has cancer. Also if she does have cancer, then there is a 79.2% probability that a mammograph will detect this. In other words, she tests positive, where positive is not good. That means that uh, uh, there is a chance that uh, this uh, cancer is present. Uh, but notice, of course, uh, that this also implies that there will be some people um, who do have cancer but where the mammograph fails to detect this. Next, if she does not have cancer, then there is a 90.4% probability that the mammograph will give her a clean bill of health. That is, she tests positive, uh, tests negative. Uh, but again, this also implies that uh, there's a 9.6% probability that um, she'll get a positive diagnosis. In other words, an, a, a false positive, an incorrect diagnosis, indicating that she does have cancer. Uh, and of course, that figure of 9.6% is obtained by subtracting 90.4 from 100. Uh, and I should add that these um, uh, probabilities relating to diagnosis are obtained from previous cases. Okay, so the woman undergoes screening and tests positive. What is the probability that she has cancer? Well, in the uh, study reported by David Eddy, 95 of his 100 physicians stated that the probability was round about 75%. This figure turns out to be wildly wrong. But before we uh, look at what the correct answer should be, notice that that figure of 75% is quite close to this bit of diagnostic information uh, relating to the probability of getting a correct diagnosis if you do have cancer. Maybe this is what the doctors were focusing on. But they'd be incorrect to do so because you have to integrate this uh, bit of diagnostic information uh, with the, the chances of uh, false negative, uh, sorry, false positives, and also the prior probability. Uh, of course, we see here that the prior probability of cancer is just one percent. Okay, so. This is what Bayes' theorem looks like in the abstract. On the left side of this equation, we've got P H given D, which uh, translates into the probability of a focal hypothesis being true 
given that we've got a single item of data or a datum. So that vertical line between the H and the D represents the fact that this is a conditional probability. It's the probability of one thing being true, conditional on some other event. And uh, on the right hand side of the equation, we've got information that we already know. So here we simply replace the uh, alphabetical terms by particular numbers. So let's look at the uh, example that we've begun with. Oh, and uh, sorry, before doing that, just notice that um, in Bayes' theorem here, uh, I'm highlighting our prior probabilities. So pH is uh, our prior probability, uh, in this instance, that uh, the patient has cancer. And here, p not h is the probability uh, of not having cancer. And you can actually usually break down uh, an alternative hypothesis into several different alternative hypotheses. Uh, but I'm going to keep it fairly simple here. I'm either going to talk about the hypothesis being true or it not being true. So let's replace the H's and the D's with what we see here um, relating to our current example. On the left-hand side of the equation, we've got the probability of the patient having cancer given that she gets a positive diagnosis. And looking at the right-hand side of the equation, I'm highlighting here again the prior probabilities. Um, uh, we can refer to these, in fact, as base rates because uh, it is based on statistical information from uh, prior cases. And we can begin re by replacing those uh, uh, letters of the alphabet with the numbers that we know. So first of all, I've repla replaced the uh, probability of having cancer with the figure of 0 0.01, shown here. And now we can also replace the uh, probability of not having cancer with the number 0.99. Having done that, we can look at the other terms in the equation. First of all, the probability of getting positive diagnosis given that the patient has cancer and that figure is 0.792. And lastly, lastly, we can look at this uh, figure, the probability of getting a positive diagnosis given that cancer is not present and that figure is 0 0.096 and all it remains for us to do now is do the appropriate multiplications and one instance of division so we multiply uh, 0.792 by 0 0.01 and divide that by 0.792 times 0 0.01 again added to 0 0.096 times 0.99 and that gives us this figure 0 0.077 and you can see that that number is vastly different from what was stated by the doctors in David Eddy's study so this figure here 0 0.077 or 7.7 percent is not 75 percent which is what those doctors stated so that's how Bayes' theorem works. And uh, I'm going to leave you here with the reference for David Eddy's 1982 study, which is well worth reading because it contains uh, quite a bit of detail that I don't have the time to go into here. Uh, and in a subsequent presentation, I'm also going to talk about some alternative ways of representing uh, these uh, Bayesian calculations. Uh, but for now, that's the basics of Bayes' theorem.